what we're going to do now is we're going to do some more mental gymnastics and kind of bringing back some of the tools that we've learned before. A lot of what you're going to see in this whole chapter is building up on some of the tools so we can kind of drive it home with some of the polynomial or some of the quadratic graphing and exploration that we're going to be doing here real soon. So what we were looking at is I'm multiplying two numbers, 6 to the 1 7th times 6 to the 4 7th. You guys remember what we do when we multiply exponents? Well, if the bases are the same, we just add the exponents. And the bases here are the same. So this becomes 6 to the 1 7th plus 4 7th. Or 6 to the 5 7th. Kind of cool. And then also, if we want to, we can write it in radical form, which is the 7th root of 6 to the 5th. And again, there may be a reason we'd want to do that, but at least we know that we can do that. All right, what do we do with What do we do with that one? We're dividing exponents with like bases. And when we divide exponents or ex numbers with exponents with like bases, we really subtract the exponents. So 32 over 16, I'm going to kind of leave that there and then think about the x's. So I have x to the 1 half minus 3 fourths. 32 divided by 16, I'll do that part. You do the x to the 1 half minus 3 fourths. How do we subtract? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's x to the, actually it's a 2 fourths minus a 3 fourths, 2x to the negative 1 fourth. So I have 2 times x to the negative 1 fourth. Uh, I don't like negative exponents, that's not reduced or simplified, so I'm going to simplify it. Uh, and so this x, that's the only thing, that's, it's, that's the base of the exponent. That 2 is not. So I do nothing with that 2 at all. He stays in the numerator position, and the x comes down with an exponent of 1 fourth. And now that problem is simplified and reduced as far as it can go. Okay, let's look at 8.3 to the 3 fourths, and that entire thing to the 2 thirds. Well, here we're just multiplying uh, an exponent to an exponent. Or we have a situation where we have an exponent raised to an exponent. In that case, we multiply the exponents. So 8.3 stays. And exponent to an exponent, that becomes 6 twelfths. So I'm left with 8.3 to the 6 twelfths. Or, for those of us that like to reduce problems, equals 8.3 to the 1 half. And that problem is reduced as far as it will go. And the one last example. Let's say we have x to the negative 2 fifths, y to the 1 third, all to the 1 half. Looks like i got a whole bunch of things going on here. Well, if we just do it one chunk at a time, I think we'll all be successful with this problem. Well, the first thing we remember is that I kind of have exponents to the exponents. So this becomes x to the negative 2 fifths times the 1 half, which becomes negative 2 tenths. And then the y, 1 third to 1 half becomes y to the 1 sixth. I'm going to clean this 2 tenths up to a 1 fifth. So I have x to the negative 1 fifth, y to the 1 sixth. And I'm almost home except I have a negative in one of the exponents. I want to change that so I don't have any negatives in any of the exponents. And remember, that negative, to get rid of it, I put in the numerator, or the denominator. So it becomes x to the 1 fifth on the denominator, and then the numerator, that 1 sixth, he stays. So I have y to the 1 sixth over x to the 1 fifth. And that problem now is cleanly and simply reduced. 